Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the portal of death into life, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. But Christ has been raised from the dead. Since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I will not die but live. I will proclaim what the Lord has done. Please be seated. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen.
The first reading for the day is from Isaiah 26. On this mountain, the Lord of armies will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of aged wines, with the best cuts of meat and the finest wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples, the burial cloth stretched over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Look, here is our God. We waited for him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Alleluia.
The second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If our hope in Christ applies only to this life, we are the most pitiful people of all. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came by a man, the resurrection of the dead also is going to come by a man. For as in Adam they all die, so also in Christ they all will be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ is the first fruits, and then Christ's people at his coming. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has done away with every other ruler and every other authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Death is the last enemy to be done away with. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Please stand. St. Mark chapter 16. Alleluia. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they could go and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. They were saying to each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. They went out and hurried away from the tomb, trembling and perplexed. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is Christ Jesus lay in death strong bands. Note that the women will sing stanza three, the men sing stanza five. Thank you. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Alleluia. Why is it that when the angels show up, people just freak out? When they appear to Zechariah, he dropped his censer to marry the mother of our Lord. She was terrified. On the night of his birth, when they visited the shepherds, they were sore afraid. Well, at least the shepherds did what the angels told them to do. But then here again in his resurrection, you heard it. Trembling and perplexed, they went and hurried away from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Oh dear, they were afraid. What a sorry conclusion that even the most devoted to Jesus could put on such a glorious Easter message. They were the first to hear of it and from an angel no less. They had been there at the cross while the great disciples were cowering away. They had gone and visited the funeral that Joseph and Nicodemus had done for Jesus. But now when everything that Jesus had said again and again is fulfilled and the angels reward them for being the greatest devoted to him going that early in the morning, when the word strikes their ear, their hearts should have burst forth. Instead, they were terrified. So let's just say it. If we were the ones doing Easter, we would have done it better. I mean, just look at how well we do Easter. All right? We even cook for it. Great food. We do it right. And if we were arranging the events of this Easter, well, then it would have been better. Because you can hardly blame these poor women. And the disciples, too. Because why? The resurrection happened in secret. There was nobody in the tomb watching Jesus closely for his eyes to suddenly pop open and he breathed his last breath. No one saw him go through the rocks. And of course, there is a reason for that, and a good reason. Something we confess so often in the Creed. And we probably have forgotten what we learned about it in the Catechism. The resurrection happened. Jesus came to life unseen by everyone and at the beginning of his glory, Jesus descended into hell. Boggles our mind, doesn't it? Jesus triumphed over all of our enemies, first travels to the place of the eternal dying. Can you imagine the gasp of unbelief by those who were there? when Jesus entered into Main Street hell in triumph. Can you imagine the devil who thought he had succeeded in killing God, finding out that he had and he indeed himself was crushed. Can you imagine all those who said, there is no need for God and no need for Savior. Not only did they meet their maker when they died, but now they got to meet the Savior they had rejected. They had no use for Him in their lives. And now hell becomes more hell seeing the salvation they had lost. But no one saw it. All of His suffering and His passion was on display for the whole world to see. But His resurrection seen by no one. But of course we know that we could never do it better than God could. We have learned that all the way through our Lent journey. So here are these women, torn by grief and fear and confusion and sorrow. And the angel sent them away. With what? The angels gave the word. And there it is. They gave 
the word, the same word that Jesus had spoken again and again and again. And the angel simply repeated it. Christ gives his word. But now look at what that word has to overcome. The word of the resurrection has to overcome sight. Because we would rather see it than hear it. The word of the resurrection have to, has to conquer reason. Because the dead just don't come alive. That's completely unreasonable. The word of the resurrection has to overcome and conquer feelings. Because you know how we feel is the best gauge of what is real. The word of the resurrection has to overcome experience because we know life better than God himself knows it. But he gives his word. And Jesus' resurrection wings that word with life-giving power because Jesus' word is not a dead word. It is a living word. And what is the word that wings the resurrection? Fear not. Would we have reason to be afraid? Well, of course we would. If there is no resurrection, we would fear that we are still left in our sins. We would fear that we would have to stand before God with the sins we know well and no innocence whatsoever and we would stand before Him in great fear. So then you clearly see why nearly every time the angel speaks, why Jesus emphasized that the night before He died and He does again and again and again on this glorious day, fear not. Sin and death we must fear, but now fear not, because what does Jesus' resurrection prove? Sin is dead. Death is dead. And Christ doesn't give us feelings that we know whether or not He has done this. He has given us His Word, and nothing can be more sure than that. So do you fear ever in your life that God, that God doesn't love you anymore as life is falling apart? Sin is dead. Death is dead. Do you think God loves you? Do you fear that you have been away from God just too long for Him to receive you back? Sin is dead. Death is dead. Do you think Christ wants you? Do you fear that you have sinned too great? Too many times? Sin is dead. Death is dead. All the sin has been destroyed by his death. Do you fear being alone? Sin is dead. Death is dead. He lives. And why do you think he lives but to be with you and live with you? Are you afraid of the darkness? Sin is dead. Death is dead. And the light of Jesus' resurrection destroys the darkness of sin in our hearts, in our minds. So hear the word of the resurrection day. Fear not. Fear not, because you are not left in your sins. Fear not your present troubles. Fear not your future disease. Fear not the sins of the past or the death of tomorrow. Because if we linger just for a moment in that tomb, look closely in there. Everything you fear is dead. And now let's get out of that tomb quickly. And let's return to the glorious light of his resurrection. That we may live in that light. And in this life that Jesus has given us. Let us leave the dark deeds of sin dead in the tomb where they are. And let us live set free from sin. 
and let us not leave in terror. But in overwhelming joy at the love God has shown us in the death and resurrection of His Son. And as we live, let there be less and less of the deeds of darkness as the light of Jesus' resurrection drives them from our hearts and from our lives. And let us see their foolishness for what they are. How foolish our greed. When Christ has given our life back to us and God has promised that He will give us along with Him all things. How foolish our obsession for avenging wrongs done to us when He has so fully and freely forgiven all the hurt that we have inflicted on Him by our sin. How foolish even the fear of death since His resurrection has changed our death into the beginning of eternal joy. Let nothing diminish our resurrection joy this day. And now the angel tells the women, go tell Peter and the others. Now why, why should they do that again? If we were doing this Easter thing, it wouldn't be like this. And didn't they disown him? Weren't they ones that abandoned him? Why should they get to hear this news? Because there's a reason why they're not there. They are lost in doubt and fear. And they need to hear this word of the resurrection. And we know not only us and them, but a multitude who are living in the darkness of sin and death. They must hear the fear not of the resurrection. And again, just like we think we could have pulled off Easter better than Jesus, we may think that Jesus can do better than you and me for sharing this glorious word. But it's this joy that he has put into our hearts and into our minds and upon our lips. A joy that we live in our lives. And as we consider the glorious life that we now have in Jesus, the death of our sin and the death of our death, what becomes of our Easter? Shall we chase the cute fuzzy bunny across the lawn which is soon to be covered with snow? No April Fools. Shall we consume all the eggs we can forgetting that they too are a symbol of Jesus' resurrection? Do we dress up in our best that we may show everyone else how great our fashion taste is? If this is our Easter, then what a pity would that be? Because today our Christ lives. Sin is dead. Death is dead. Christ has kept his word. Fear not. Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. With one heart and voice, let us confess our faith with the second article of the Apostles' Creed and the Catechism. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, 
and serve Him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as He has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. As we gather the offering, we sing hymn number 152, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Also, please take the opportunity to find the black booklet in your pew, the friendship booklet. <coughs> Fill that out and pass it along to those who are with you. <coughs>
please stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ, our risen Lord, and for all according to their needs. Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death for all. Allow the news of your victory to be proclaimed here and throughout the world, that all who are surrounded by death may be rescued by your gift of life. Give zeal and joy to all who proclaim your saving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have swallowed up death forever. The eyewitnesses of your resurrection could not be silenced from proclaiming you even when threatened with death. Sustain our persecuted brothers and sisters in true faith and the bold confession of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you remove the veil of death that is spread over all nations. Give wisdom and zeal for truth and justice to our president, our governor, all in authority over us, and to those governing other nations. Lead them to protect the lives of our unborn brothers and sisters to punish wrongdoers, and to maintain what is good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the captain of our salvation. Defend our military personnel and their families. Grant them and us rest in your abiding victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the first fruits of the dead, never to die again. With your word, comfort those who are ill, recovering, facing surgery, depressed, or troubled. Especially our brother, Alan Knabel, who is in the hospital, and our sister, Kathy Meridian, whose earthly death and eternal life are near at hand. According to your gracious will, give them healing or strengthen them to accept their afflictions. Give all of us confidence that on the last day, you will wipe away all tears from the eyes of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you were dead, but behold, you live. Your resurrected body gives us a promising preview of what will happen to our bodies on the last day. Grant peace to those near death. Refresh and sustain all hospice workers that they may provide your loving care to the dying, never hastening death, but alleviating pain and surrounding the dying with love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All this we ask, Lord Jesus Christ, in joyful confidence that you have conquered death and the grave. And because you live, we shall live also. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, Equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We sing to him the day of resurrection number 166 in the hymn.